Hey everybody, I thought I'd make a video on this and I've had a lot of questions and I'm going over some of my Q&A video, but I thought I would make a video on this because simply I have a lot of new subscribers and uh, a lot of questions on Ancient Anubis being what we call this thing today. Number one, I thought it was a lion. Yeah, so did I. I really did. I was all on board with Mr. Hancock and Mr. Buval's, you know, 10,500 BC theory. But uh, it really wasn't until I read The Sphin Mystery of the Sphinx, Sanctuary of Anubis by Robert Temple, that I even considered it being something other than a lion. And when I first read that book, I thought it was an interesting theory. He seemed to bring up good, uh, very good points. So I was kind of, you know, not sure what to think. So this is one of those subjects, I mean, when you have the greatest monument in the world, and we don't have a clear history of it, this is one of those things I wanted to investigate. And this, and the Shroud, and uh, a couple other things have been my ma main points of focus as far as research the last three years, or four years even, with the Sphinx. So this is something that I've really read about a lot, because I really wanted to get an answer for. Just like the Shroud of Turin, that mystery. I think the history of the Sphinx and the history of the Shroud are the two biggest failures in all of, all of history. So those are two things I wanted to get to the bottom of, and I wasn't going to be satisfied until I did, and <laughs> I surprised myself. That's all I'll say about that. Now we've had questions on the front paws of the Sphinx. Why do they look so weird? Why all the restoration work? Why are they so long? Why are the front paws so long? And I've gone over many different things on ancient Anubis. Number one, the Egyptians their gods, they related them to what they saw, and they saw jackals on the edge of cemeteries at the edge of the desert guarding them. So that's why ancient Anubis was the original god of Giza protecting the sacred necropolis. And I've made many videos here. I just went over all of the artwork that is seen throughout tombs. Why isn't the Sphinx depicted in tombs? Well, it is, but we're just looking for the wrong thing. It's everywhere. Now in this video, I go over how the ancient text in ancient Rostow identifies the temple we call the Sphinx Temple today, and they identify it as the Temple of Tep 2F, which is the Temple of Anubis. And here in Tut's tomb, ancient Anubis was staring Howard Carter in the face. It says he is upon the box coffin of Orion. And doesn't that match what we see out in the Giza Plateau today with the ancient eroded Anubis and that shaft and that massive coffin down below? Isn't that what we see? Here, the coffin text says his name is Dogface, his size is huge. Does, is that talking about a lion? Now, today being March 21st, when people say, well, it's a lion and you don't know what you're talking about, I say, show me the ancient artwork that shows the alignment of a lion to the spring equinox. And of course, they can't do any, any sort of thing. And here is ancient Anubis, one of the most famous scenes in all of Egypt. What does this depict? A perfect balance between good and bad, light and darkness. What is the alignment of today, March 21st? It's the alignment to the sun on a day, perfect balance between light and darkness. It's depicted in the ancient art, the alignment of today. In this video, I go over how a pre-dynastic king, part of his tomb for his royal dog was used in a later tomb. And what did it say on the slab of rock that was in this unidentified king's tomb? Well, it says he buried his royal dog. He was so special that he buried him out in front of the Great Pyramid so he could be buried in front of the great god Anubis. Does that sound like a lion was out there? It wasn't. Now, here is the Sphinx, what we see today. Are these lions paused? Well, let's head out to in front of Caesar's Palace for a second.
Now, here is a representation of an actual sphinx, woman's head, lion's body, and wings. That is what a sphinx is in Greek mythology. But you notice here, the lion's paws are barely extended from in front of the chest. Not that I'm fixated on the chest or anything, but clearly what is on the Giza Plateau is Anubis based on those uh, forearms or front paws, clearly. Now, I just use that because I think it's a very accurate depiction of a lion and how the Egyptians saw them. Now, why are the front legs so long? Well, let's go look at Anubis front legs and paws. Well, let's go down in front of the Luxor. All right, I'm down at Luxor. Let's just get a view here. We'll do a little comparison here, but that is a pretty good representation of ancient Anubis. So after looking at a lion and looking at ancient Anubis in accurate depictions, you can clearly see the great shrine that we see on the Giza Plateau is the original god of Giza, the great god Anubis, described in the ancient text. Hope you thought that was interesting and you all have a very nice day.